Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. With Core Set 2021 just a few days away, I thought I'd compile a short list of the most valuable cards within this brand new set, so you know what to look out for when opening those sweet, sweet packs. Now, prices are changing day by day, and this is going off valuations again from MTG Goldfish, and this is recorded on the 23rd of June, 2020. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Help my little MTG channel hit 50 subs. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the list. First off, we have the 10th most valuable card in the core set 2021, and that card is Massacre Worm. This powerful worm is a reprint from Mirrodin Besieged, and you can see why Wizards thought it was time to bring it back. It's a strong boy with an extra strong two ETB effects. Having all creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn could not only finish off a load of enemy creatures, but the extra spicy second ability of having an opponent lose life whenever they lose a creature, you could be hitting this straight on the field and immediately be doing a ton of damage right off the bat. Imagine this popping off with something like a Grave Betrayal. Kill your opponent's creatures, opponent also loses life, you then gain control of your opponent's creatures. Absolutely huge. On the list at ninth, we have Liliana, Walker of the Dead. The first of three planeswalkers on this list is the dreaded Liliana. Longtime players know that when she has a card that comes out, she means business. Pop that first ability off with a Megrim and you're laughing. If you're even a couple of turns in with that second ability with the black deck, you could easily destroy any creature, giving it minus X, minus X, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. The final ability, whilst not the greatest ultimate ability we've ever seen from a Liliana, is still nothing to turn your head at. Bringing a creature back once a turn is absolutely huge, especially if you're playing Golgari. Using cards like Mulch and putting those powerful creatures in the graveyard, you could have a card like Blood Gift Demon out in no time. In as currently the eighth most expensive card from the new set, we have Chromatic Ori. Ori? 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 I don't know. This card is surely a dream card in Commander for those multicolored decks. Yes, it does cost a hefty seven CMC to play, but when it enters, it makes you be able to spend mana as if mana was any color. Plus, you then immediately have five mana of any color to spend. This card essentially pays for itself straight away. With that final ability, you'd have an absolute card draw engine if you've got a five color deck already popping off. To all of my friends watching, this might be going straight in my Slither deck. Coming in as the seventh most expensive card from the new C20 set, we have Elder Gargaroth. Oh, where to begin with this one? I'm so sorry, Colossal Dreadmore. The Gargaroth is just a little bit what you'd categorize as OP. For three generic and two forests, you get a super strong 6-6 six -six with Vigilance, Reach, Trample, and an extra effect whenever it attacks or blocks. It's actually just stupid levels of powerful. You know what your opponents will be saying once the Elder Gargaroth starts coming at all your creatures. <laughs> Imagine attaching a bare Umbra to it, essentially turning it into a stronger, semi-indestructible wilderness reclamation. Gargi, you're going straight in all of my commander decks. I so hope I pack you in the pre-release tournament this weekend. The sixth most valuable from the core 2021 upcoming set, we have Azusa, Lost but Seeking. Interestingly, Azusa is the only non-mythic rare on this list, just falling into the rare tier. So this card will statistically be the most likely for you to get when pulling those packs out of all of these 10 cards. Now this isn't a new card, but merely a reprint from way back to 2004 in the set Champions of Kamigawa. She may not fall into the Mythic Rare tier, but you can see why she's on this list. Play two additional lands on each of your turns, so you get to play three lands a turn. That is insanely good ramp. You could be getting your huge greenie boys like Protein Hulk or Regal Force just that extra little few turns earlier. Oh, imagine drawing those cards with Regal Force, then whacking down a few more lands. That would be so good. Or if you don't like extra card ramp in your personal decks, you can just sell Azusa and buy yourself a few more packs with a profit. Taking its place as the fifth most valuable card from the upcoming core set, we have Fiery Emancipation, a brand new card to magic, and it is an absolute scorcher. It's such a powerful enchantment. If a source you control would deal damage, it deals three times that much damage instead. That is bonkers. It's potentially game ending. If you had a Maelstrom Wanderer as your commander and it's doing triple damage due to Fire Emancipation, that's 21 damage. That's literally game over for your opponent and commander. 
Again, if you pack this card, you're instantly gaining a card that's worth just over a tenner. That's good profit right there. I don't know about you, but I feel a teamer deck coming along. Just missing out on the bronze medal spot, the fourth most valuable card in this new set is Terror of the Peaks. A brand new card to MTG, and it certainly is a feisty little dragon. Some very cool abilities, including the second one that causes your opponent to lose a bit of life just to do damage to your dragon. This would work so well with those token engine cards, such as Annexed Hardened in the Forge. If you've got creatures dying and hopefully dealing damage to your opponents on the way out, Annex will create a load of little tokens which Terror of the Peaks will then trigger and deal even more damage to your opponent. Any target too, so you can be coming at your opponent's creatures, planeswalkers, or just life total if you want to be direct. Um, phrasing? Taking this spot as the third most valuable card from the new core set is everyone's favourite reprint, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I talked about Ugin in my most valuable cards from the last 10 years list, and since then, in just a few short weeks, Ugin from the Fate Reforged set has taken a hefty tumble in price due to this reprint. I actually talked about him in great detail in that previous video, so I won't go into too much, but just look at the card. Incredibly powerful, and the thought of him using that minus 10 ability to put seven cards back onto the battlefield for essentially nothing is mouthwatering. Uh... I don't really have much else to say about Ugin, so here, enjoy this clip of my mum falling off a Segway. Stop. <laughs> it's okay mum, Ugin will put you back on the battlefield in one piece. And runner up for the second most valuable card in Magic Core 2021, we have Prickly Marmoset. Stop it, get some help. We have Grim Tutor, a card that hasn't seen the light of day since 1999 card that is so pricey you could sell it and almost buy a booster bundle with the profit. I love the tutor cards and they're rightly so expensive. Yes there are better tutors out there like Demonic Tutor but Grim Tutor still rightfully does the job. Search your library for a card. No specifics, just any card. That's amazing. In a tight spot? Quickly grab a Lice Finale. Want to land that final blow? Grab a Zenith Flare. Looking at you there Steve. So make sure when it's pre-release time or just when the set comes out you're keeping your eye out for this bad boy. Also, have you seen the full art? Absolutely sensational. I'm sure you'll all know what card is taking the number one spot. Yes, we have the Time Tactician himself. It's Teferi, Master of Time. And in my opinion, boy is he broken. Look at the top text. Activate any player's turn as an instant. You can loot Teferi's first ability on your turn and then a further three times in Commander before it even gets back to you. Minus 10 might seem like a lot, but if you have the creatures to stop people coming at Teferi, then you'll be there in no time. The minus 3 ability to phase creatures you don't control is really cool and something you don't actually see that much, but we all know it's about that huge minus 10 ability. If you have two extra turns, you really should be winning, or at least be able to kick some players to the curb in Commander. In my opinion, I still prefer Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, but this card is still an insanely powerful card, and if you manage to pull it, you'll have your hands on a card worth well over 30 quid, which is just mad. Why not sell it and buy 8 more packs? Maybe you'll even get 8 more Teferi. Would you take that risk? I sure would. Deal or no deal? There we have it, that's our list. I'll put a quick graphic of them all now, just in case you wanted to have a screenshot for future use. Thanks for watching this video. Please do hit that like button and why not give us a little subscribe for future lists, pack openings and much more to come. Do check out our Instagram for all the top memes and soon to be a 500 follower giveaway. For now, I'm all tapped out. So I'll see you in the next video.